Well, y'all, I made a boo-boo, and it wasn't a minor flub-up. It was a doozy. Completely unavoidable. Lord have mercy, I meant avoidable, not unavoidable. Heaven help me. Because I didn't use my brain, it was one of those that we call in the South, her butter's done slid off her biscuit kind of thing. So here's what happened. I was working on this project in February. And I got to a point where I was at a standstill. I didn't know where I wanted to take it. And it was approaching March. And I thought, oh, Easter is the last day of March. I need to get started on my Easter projects. I'll set this aside. I'll start all my Easter egg things I wanted to do. Try to get them sold before Easter. And so that's what I did. Well, in the middle of March, mid to late March, IOD came out with their spring release. And it was at that point, I thought, oh, I know kind of where I want to go now with this project. But I had to finish my Easter stuff. So I did that. We took about a week break to go see my mama for Easter in Texas. And then I came back to it. Well, I had already edited everything I had in video so far up to this point of where I had it finished, this project, when I picked up on it. Started doing my videos, went upstairs to upload videos to my MacBook in my video editing program. And this is what I saw. You open it up and it says some files in your project have been moved or are missing. Please select the file from the list below and relocate them. Relocate them one by one. And here's the long list of missing video clips. Locate selected, not possible, say okay. And there you go, warning. You go down here. See, I'd edited everything up to a point. And they're all missing. Warning, 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 warning. All of them. Completely missing. You see, videos take up a lot of memory and on my MacBook, I, I only have just so much room. So a lot of times, even when I'm working on videos, I have to go back through my downloads and delete the old videos that I've already made a movie out of and uploaded. To my chagrin, I deleted every single video on this project and emptied the trash. Gone forever. Forever. Those videos were not on my iPad anymore or my iPhone, not even in the recently deleted album because it'd been over 30 days and they slowly delete after 30 days. So what to do, what to do? I, I started not to even show y'all this video, but there is enough left and the, and the part that's I think really the most interesting is how I did the little topper piece and how I came up with that idea. So what I'm gonna do is go through the steps of what you haven't seen or what you won't see. It's really pretty easy. It's just basic decoupage and molds and painting and dry brushing like I've done in a gazillion videos. And then we'll be caught up. So I started with these. It's a little packet of four. Obviously, the one they used is missing from the pack. They come from Hobby Lobby. I wait until they go on sale. They're wood things. They usually go on sale at least once a month, sometimes once every two weeks. Anything over $4.99 is 4% 4 off. I can't remember how much this was, but the four pack, it wasn't over with the discount, probably $6.00. So that's the frame that I used. The next step was to sand it a little bit. I'll just use this kind of as a demo of what I did. After I sanded, I painted one coat in the base, 
with just folk art, home decor, chalk paint in cottage white. Any white would do. You could even just use um, an acrylic if you wanted. I like chalk paint. It dries fast. You could also use gesso. Also dries fast. Okay. The next step was to decoupage. This was a piece of decoupage paper that I've had for about three years. I believe it was a Roy cycle. Most of it was gone because I had used this big piece with the birds on the 3D bird wall plaque. Here's a quick shot of that. But I cut away this bottom corner and I decoupaged that piece in the base using DIY liquid patina. That's what I like to use for decoupage. I'm about out. I may try uh, another decoupage product after this, maybe Pentarts or something. This serves as three purposes. It's a decoupage medium, it's a transfer medium, and it's also really a top coat. So I don't have to top coat. If I use this to, for decoupage and then use it again, brush it on top, it's kind of like a top coat as well. At that point, I, I did my bird stencil, which is this. It came from Aced Craft, an overseas company. When I order from there, I usually order several things. And for the medium, I just used Pintart's Deluxe Paste in Truffle and a little bit of their Iron Paste here and there. can kind of see where it's a little darker in here. That's the iron paste and a few little spots. Let that dry. Then it was time to do the molds using hardy soft clay and three molds. I used bird song, did this little bird right here. I used Herbology by Redesign and this little cheap mold from Amazon that has grasses and more flowers and herbs, lavender and such. You can see here, this was the Herbology, these bigger items, and then these smaller things were just the grasses and some lavender from this mold. Glued them down, let that dry. The next thing I like to do a lot of times when I'm doing molds like this is to start with a watered down brown acrylic paint. I used Bittersweet Chocolate by DecoArt, this and a little water, and basically brushed over the entire thing and then even the paper and then wiped back with a damp um, paper towel or in this case a baby wipe. After that, I used more acrylic paint in a medium gray and kind of added some shading here and in this area here of the opening of the bird cage, just to give it a little bit of depth. The next step was just simple dry brushing of various colors of greens and purples and a little dry brush of white. And that's pretty much where we left off. And now I can show you in detail how I finished this piece. So this was the state of my project when I got back to it after Easter. I'm going to use Pintart's Classic Crackle versus the Fine Line on this piece. I chose the crackle, the classic crackle, because it almost looks like cracked varnish. It's very, very tiny little cracks. And the other reason I chose to use the classic was because I did not want to put any kind of a shiny finish over the top. And when you're using Pintart's Fine Line, you have to use an oil-based or petroleum-based top coat and the only one that I have is Glossy from Pintart. Now I could have sprayed it I suppose with um, a matte sealer 
but I also did not want great big large cracks like you get with the fine line so again that's why I'm using the classic crackle it's a two component system here I'm applying component one and I even applied it over all of the molds and the molds do take there is a tiny bit of small crackle here and there which I believe I show you in a little bit
I want to pause here with a tip on cleaning brushes when you have used a petroleum-based, oil-based product. In the one of the last videos I did on the Easter egg, I believe it was vintage, uh, just vintage Easter egg, I had talked about when you're using Pentart's gloss coat or any of these oil brand patinas and you need to clean your brushes, that they make a turpentine. Well, a bottle hardly bigger than this of their turpentine was like $12.95. Extremely expensive. So when I ran out of that, I got this turpenoid. This big bottle at Hobby Lobby was $8.49. It did not clean my brushes. I don't know what the difference was because even the little cleaner from Pentart says turpentine based. So I didn't think turpenoid would be that uh, different. It says turpentine substitute and odorless center for artist oil colors, oils and varnishes. But I'm telling you, it would not clean the brushes. That gets expensive when you ruin a bunch of brushes. Well, on that video, a subscriber, Cinda, uh, she commented, she's an oil painter, and she commented how she cleans her brushes. And I'm going to tell you, it works. And it's cheap. These two little brushes were ones, well, actually, this one was corroded and all bent and full of product. I hadn't cleaned this one at all. And this one I used in this video. Look how clean that is. And I can use these now for oil or acrylics. But here's how she said to do it. She said to rub them with vegetable oil. So you rub, 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 get all the paint or whatever it is you're using, paste, um, top coat that is oil-based, get it all out with the vegetable oil, and then wash it with soap and water. And they're like new. This one was a super expensive brush and even when I cleaned it with turpentine, the brush pieces would s still stick together. Now it's soft like it's brand new. I'm telling you, that was a lifesaver tip. Vegetable oil and then follow up with dish soap and water. And they're like new. Yet another video that got deleted. Um, all I really did with this, probably a couple of weeks, really, before I did most of the rest of the project, was I poured Alumilite two-part resin in a mold. And this is the mold. Now it's very hard, so I'm having to heat it to soften it a little bit because I'm going to be cutting the bottom of it off. I'm going to show you a picture of... Uh, a wall plaque in my house and this is where I'm going with this this is the idea that I had for a topper for this project
I am not good with sharp objects, so my husband always does specialty cutting for me. I'm about to show you on the little stick that he used his Dremel tool to create some slits where I had marked. And I'm going to glue those popsicle sticks into uh, the stick. The UHU glue is an adhesive made in Germany. I get it from Amazon. Um, I saw a model maker use this glue when I was struggling with gluing aluminums together. I noticed that this lady used this glue. Now she was from Europe, but I, I googled, found it on Amazon, and I really, really like this adhesive. Whenever I have something that I'm not sure what adhesive to use, I go to the UHU. Same thing for this piece here on the top. It's pretty thin. I need to glue it to that stick and I'm going to use the UHU glue. Now, before I do that, it's got to be in the center, so I've got to find some things that I can use to raise that up to uh, the right height, and I just grabbed a piece of cardboard and then some popsicle sticks until I got it to the height that I needed it, and then I was able to glue it on there, and I, I let it sit for probably an hour like that, to make sure that it was going to stay, which it did. The next step is going to be for me to start making kind of a, a rusty iron or really more like an oil rub bronze kind of look, but I wanted a little texture on it, plus that texture I knew was going to help uh, tie all that together, the stick and the, and the little resin piece. Um, just because the texture itself, the texture medium is going to act like a little bit of a glue. Many months ago, I had asked my husband to uh, go by Harbor Freight when he was in town and pick up an item for me. He came back with a goodie bag of stuff. <laughs> he takes care of me. And I'm, a lot of the things he got, I was like, what am I going to use that for? This was one of them. It was a small little level. Well, I'm so grateful that he did that because my table is not level. I am so ready for us to get um, the basement redone where we're creating a little craft area. Here I'm going to be pouring some Alumilite resin in several molds. Now when I pour Alumilite, I pick several molds to pour into because it's really hard to just make a small batch. But what I'm doing here is I'm going to pour some end caps. Let me remind you of the picture again. I need some end caps for this stick, which is why I drilled the hole with the pin vise. So using the swags mold, there's a little I don't know, fleur de lis kind of design that I'm going to pour. I'm going to let it set up a little bit. Then I'm going to use an eye screw, a really tiny one, and lay it in there. That will be what I use at the end of the stick to screw my little fleur de lis thing into. It needs to be two sided. So after I pour the first one, let that set up and take it out then I'll pour the next one and I'll have a three-dimensional end cap for my stick. 